Yes. 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 SQL queries prepared statement is also used to <clears throat> execute the simple uh, queries but i have shown you that it takes the parameters means it uses the parameterized objects so if you remember in the class yesterday we did uh, we have given a placeholder for the name for the age <clears throat> and we have set in our statement the prepared statement object we have set the name the like the index one as your name name suppose abc and at index 2 it was my age and i have set the age there so it was my prepared statement you have already seen and uh, the statement you do not have any such placeholders so you do not have to write any parameterized query and the callable statements are used to call the store procedures of your database so this is the simple difference between the statement prepare statement and callable statement <coughs> so now let us move to our next session that is the jsp servlet starts and springs so before that let's do a bit of theoreticals Uh, let me open my paint also <clears throat> while we are going to our advanced java okay the thing is why do you need uh, means why do we need this particular called advanced java any particular uh, since you have any uh, means any answers monica teshwini sandeep or nusa why do we need this advanced java what extra features has been given any one <clears throat> no sir no idea okay yeah it's a simple it's something called the your internet internet the jspc you build you do it something you have the browser you have the world wide web www you click on it you send a request to the server the server sends you a response and you can everything is visible on your screen so that is the advanced java the main function of the advanced java the java thought okay the core java only we are doing a void main so what will be a user interface if a programmer doesn't know the programming in we need to provide them a software that they can or a web browser that uh, inside the web browser some pages okay the websites actually the rather the websites where you can enter your name anything anything can be done and a corresponding response is sent so there is always a concept of your client and server <clears throat> whenever you are doing any this whenever we are going with the advanced java thing we have the no, we should have the knowledge of a client and your server do you know what are clients mean anybody <clears throat> um see yeah like uh, we are uh, the one who browses the internet or yeah uh, you can say the users you can directly say it's the web browser yeah web browser right and we and the users of the yeah yeah it's not a server only it's something we are doing a servlet it can request the server server can be anything suppose let me do this is my client and this is my web browser this is my web browser and here it is my client <coughs> this is my client so what it does it sends and url or something you type something your web browser you type something called www.google.com and something or anything or suppose you want a page or something it sends 
uh, request in the form of your HTTP like HTTP then you have the www dot with everything so it sends a HTTP protocol or HTTP request let's say a HTTP request is being sent through your web browser now <clears throat> now you have now you have the server so <clears throat> server can be i told you that it can be anything can be written here but as we are doing with our jsp servlets and all these things so it can be the server will have some container it will have something so what it does it's when the http request comes it actually this is my server inside the server to have the, some of the JSP pages, it manipulates the JSP pages using the servlets or database also inside this. And these JSP pages are rendered, right? You are sending something and this particular JSP page will be rendered. Maybe this is my JSP page, JSP page one, suppose, whenever request, and this is being JSP page one. And suppose whenever we are sending a request, this JSP page one is being rendered, and then this particular page as a response in the HTTP form is sent back to the client. <clears throat> and you have something called HTTP response. It's being sent back from your server. So this is the concept of your client and basically the server when you are rendering any page or you are sending a request it comes to your server then it's going to be your particular you are rendering this so you can say that you are browsing the formats the request in the HTTP formats and sends the to that particular um, server as monica said that we can have the user suppose the user is here suppose the user just clicks clicks in the web browser okay this is the user maybe this is the user he clicks uh, www or http request in the web browser it goes to the server it renders the information at the jsp page with the information in it maybe the name and everything and then it sends the http response to that particular browser and hope you have seen this is uh, the experience what you get now <clears throat> you can have this in jsp inside you write the html tags or you can have the HTMLs that it tells the browser how to display the uh, contents like here you can have html tags which tells the browser how to display the content to the user and the protocol HTTP protocol is a protocol or it's a root protocol that clients and servers use on the web communicate so you can have something called http request you can have http response okay and also suppose the client uses the http request the server sends in the form of http response so this is my simple this is the main thing that what the server and what the client actually does suppose <coughs> in our what i will say uh, we will go with the http that get method and the uh, put and the post sorry get and post you have also put and everything and you have this particular ports what they done first let's go what actually happens in the web server 
suppose in the web server application whenever means the server whenever this server is acting here what it actually does so before going to that before going to the web server let's let's do a simple mbc what is mbc do you have any idea anybody what is actually mbc no sir. okay mvc this is the main concept with our all advanced java lives this is my the main concept where the thing lies here so let me create a uh, new page here remember the main fund is you have the jsp here okay you have the jsp here the html tags and everything you have the jsp particular here This is my JSP that this is the JSP means you are just have some HTML tags that you are rendering the one you are seeing here the contents inside the web browser it can it is your JSP remember for now it is your JSP because we are learning JSP servlets it can be anything there it can be flex it can be angular JS it can be anything for now itself it's your JSP and servlets suppose you have this wherever something you type your name something and what it does you are typing your name age and something in the content or you are just this is a login page where you are writing your name where the user id and the password you are giving then you have the control uh, <coughs> servlets suppose you have the servlets here so whenever you are clicking on it there you have the servlets. This is the servlets that is coming. Now, whenever you are typing it here, then servlets, you have the servlets here. Servlets is your Java.java .java class. It checks that, okay, my username and ID has come. Now you have a Pojo class. Pojo is the getter setter method like we have already seen in a class you can give your suppose you have given string name and string password then you use your get string password and then you set it so you can have some pojo classes and also you can have some business classes so you can say this is this can have my pojo classes these are remember the servlets is also you can say it's Java class. This is my you can have the Pujo classes. You can have the Pujo classes or you can also you can also have classes to write your business logic. Business logic means suppose uh you are just you want to check whether he has provided the correct username and password then you will render you will go to another jsp page after the login the login is successful after you will go another jsp page where they can view the contents so this is a pojo and the business logic can be written here and then you have the you have a database suppose you have a database here Suppose you have the database where your the user ID and the and the name is being written. So your database, your name and everything is being written. So what it does, you set the username and the password. What it does, it finally checks right something called select this from a table name where user id is equal to this then it brings the information maybe it checks the database whether the password what has been sent in this jsp is uh, similar what is or is the same what is stored in 
this database okay if it is correct then you are sending back okay to the jsp that you can go to the next jsp page that is the login page and if it is not correct then you are sending an error message that username or password is not correct please revalidate or use the forget password hope we have seen this in our there now <clears throat> If we give this particularly a name, this pattern we have in Java, we have some different patterns, design patterns. Now, if you give this particular a name, so remember this JSPs, remember this JSPs, this particular JSP is always called my model. Sorry, it's called my view. This particular JSP in our layman term, it's called a view. These servlets, suppose servlet, what it does, it controls, right? You are sending the message to the servlets, it sends to a particular Pojo class or in any other classes, okay? Then it, what it does, it, this business logic where the username is correct, corresponding to the, uh, sorry, the password is correct, corresponding to the username, then it sends back the response to the servlets. Servlets check. Okay, this was the JSP. Suppose this is the JSP one. This is my JSP one. Okay, this is my one. Suppose that was my just login page. Now you have the main page. So it finds out another JSP, JSP page. Maybe when there will be a successful. Suppose it's a success. You can say. Suppose it sends back the username and password is correct. So what it does, the servlet again goes, it forwards the message to the next JSP page if it is successful or if it is a wrong, then it shows the message to the to that particular JSP page. It asks, okay, now you can just show the message that username is correct, is wrong. And if it is correct, it goes to the another JSP page. Maybe this is the JSP2. If it is correct, if it is a success, this is maybe the JSP2. When it does. So remember this particular thing, whatever you view on your browser, means in the JSP formats and everything is called your particular called view. Now the controller, the server you can see, it acts as a controller. Okay. JSP JSP sends the messages or the request to the servlets. Servers then sends the request to the Pojo class. Pojo class is all the business logic is written here. It just sends the response to the servlets. It decides which JSP page to be sent. And from JSP pages, it decides which Pojo or the business logic to be sent. So you can say this particular thing is my controller. <coughs> This is my controller. This is my controller. And this particular thing is my model. The main model or the main business logic or the produce or the database. This is this particular, you can say, not the database. It's my model. This is my model. So as a whole, you see, your MVC means model view controller. <clears throat> Check it here. My model is business logic that I'm writing. The controller is my servlets, and this view is my JSPs. So you can say in a layman language also that. The controller acts as both the model and the view because whenever this view is particularly sending anything to the servlets, it's acting as a view, and then it finds the pojo or the business logic. And again, this model means the model. Whenever it sends the request to the uh, response to the servlets, then it is acting as a model. Then it finds that which view or which JSP page to be rendered. Uh, <coughs> this is my called MBC pattern. This is the MBC pattern. This is called model view controller pattern. So, so you can see here, suppose if I'm 
writing the definitions here. First is my model MVC. Model represents an object or Java Pojo adding uh, data like username and this it can also have logic. to manipulate controller if the data changes. This means it has a Java project like suppose object or Java Pojo something username and password. It, it can have the logic whether to find the particular password is correct to the form of um, for that particular username so it can manipulate the data to the controller suppose if your data has, was changed something your data whenever the data changes in your particular jsp page okay it has something suppose in jsp2 page also you are you want to go to something called next button or if you are clicking a hyperlink then again it sends to the servlets it goes to the business logic and it renders it sends okay this page needs to be sent the data has been changed so this page needs to be rendered. It tells the servlet to render the JSP3. So servlet renders the JSP3 page and in the view, it shows that particular format of the JSP page. Now you can check the view. So you can define the view as <coughs> Okay, the view, you can say it represents Uh, visualization of the data when the model changes. Like model, if the model is asking to change this, then this particular view or same thing is the visualization form of the data. Now you have the controller, you have already seen that controller acts as Acts on sorry as not on both model and view. It controls the data flow into the model objects. And okay. Uh, view whenever data changes, it keeps view and model response hope that is clear with you the model view controller any questions you have yes it's clear okay now uh, if you go to the remember in your model view controller in this embassy there are particularly two models means two particular patterns in MVC, we have that called particular model one, and in MVC, you have this called model two. These two models we have in our MVC. So, first we can say the first model. Model one, okay. 
in survey te technology, the model one, the simple model what we have. This is the model one. Suppose this is my web browser. Now, you what you do, you just give. Here you have your suppose the JSP. Then you have your Java beans. Okay, first let me write here. This is my JSP. Then you have this called Java. Suppose you have here. Called Java beans or the Java POYOs. Java Pete, like Java Pujos, I will say, the ones that we have written, Java Pojo, or you can say the beans, or your business logic, what is written here, then you have the database. You have the database here. Suppose this is my DB. Okay. Remember, this is my both side arrows are there. Okay, it sends a request here. This is maybe you can say this is one. It sends the request here. Suppose request and response are there. This is called my two. This is my request and response. Let me make it this way also. I do not have the arrow buttons, otherwise, I would have shown. is two okay and this is my third three suppose this is my three and see in two a request is sent in three and again the response is being sent and at finally this is the fourth is that in the web browser you are sending this sending back the response this is my fourth whenever we have done this model architect means this PC I'm telling you remember this object first you see web browser JSP Java beans at DV no servers is there check here in model one you do not have any particular servlets. So <clears throat> I can check. Let me explain the model one. What mainly your servlet does? Okay. Before going to the modern place, what your servlet does? Problem with servlets actually. It 
he compiles if any designing data if any data designing code so like the all data is modified we have seen already in our mvc if it was a servlet that we have shown you the one that we use already the mvc that was the model uh, mvc that was the model to remember the first example what i had shown is the model 2 okay in the model 1 remember we i have already shown you the model 2 the first example that i was showing the example that was my model 2 in model the servlet what it does is recompiles if any design code or data is modified so you remember this act a so it is being modified or something so sometimes whenever the data is changing every time a new thread new thread is started every time it goes to this particular a new thread is started and it recompiles so basically in the model one they, what they think what they thought okay so do not we we won't be using any servers here okay the jsp will act as this is my view the jsp is going to act as my this particular is going to act this particular as my model and controller both this particular will be going to act with this web browser thinking you think this web browser and jsp together they're going to act as my model and controller so inside jsp1 only if you are sending any data it comes back to jsp jsp1 okay it comes back to maybe your jsp1 from jsp1 it's saying that okay i need to go which jsp page because already the data has come according to the data i need to go which jsp 2 or jsp 3 it does so it's same it's the model and controller and this is your sorry it's it's my mistake it's you controller yeah yeah it's correct it should be view and controller this is my mistake this is acting as a view and my controller but this is fine view and controller and this is acting as my model this is an obsolete remember you should not use this in your this model one is very uh, means it's an obsolete and nobody uses this this is very bad programming the only advantages it has okay it is very easy it is very easy to develop whenever you do not have any servlets you do not have a particular controller it's very easy to develop and also easy to use because as a developer easy to use for a developer only the benefit it has only the advantage Otherwise, it's also recompiling. You can check whenever there is something data is being changed. You are already inside here. You have to recompile to just render other JSP pages from JSP one page other to JSP two or three. It is already recompiling. So the disadvantages you can directly see the disadvantages. There are more disadvantages than your advantages for the model one. So we never ever use this model one. See, disadvantages you can say, first point can be that navigation, this navigation that we are doing control is decentralized. Suppose you had one servlet, you had already one servlet that was controlling everything. Now you can have a many, JSP pages like from JSP1, you have gone to the JSP2 based on the 
logic written in your model then again from the JSP2 you are going to the JSP3 so it's not a centralized where this particular thing is written so it is you can say it is not centralized here it's written in a different JSP formats in every page the logic in every page you need to have some JSP1 you need to have a logic so where I need to be means propagating or where I need to go to the next uh, forward or backward in every page of a JSP maybe you have hundreds of JSP pages in every pages you need to write the code that you write in your controller so it is very much uh, you can say it is decentralized also it is time consuming you need to spend more time like to write time consuming Suppose you need to write this in your JSP page. You need to write number of tags again. Suppose if you had only username, name, password, now you have to forward based on your logic that has come. You need to forward in the JSP2. It is JSP3. So while developing, though I told you that it's the knowledge or something, it's very easy to develop, but it's very time consuming. You need to write lots of custom tags. You need to write in your HTML tag so that it can render the page and something. So it is very much time consuming. And also you can say that whenever you need to extend anything, it is very hard to extend also as it is a decentralized. Whenever you write, suppose you have five JSP pages, you need to write two more, then you need to write in each and every JSP pages that before you have one, two, three, four, five, two means to incorporate another two JSP pages or three JSP pages. But remember the model view controller, what I have shown here, the model view controller, if I can go to the next level again, what I have written, if you remember, suppose you have the you have it here the web browser okay the web browser is your client it sends a http request directly remember it sends to the controller first suppose it sends and you have the controller here that is your servlets that can be your servlets, that can be your uh, certs, that can be your springs, anything. So as we are doing servlets here, it's the controller. So in this case, my controller is my servlets. We have already seen this, this is my servlets. Based on this, based on the request sent, the HTTP request sent from this, it, it renders the JSP page or it goes to the JSP page. Okay, it renders the JSP page here. That is my view. This is my view. This is my JSP page. Okay, this is the JSP page it renders. And again, it sends back from the controller only, it sends back the request to the browser, the JSP page one, suppose it's sending the JSP page one to it. In the web browser, you are seeing the JSP page one. Then again, you are in the JSP page one, you are writing something here. So from this, it goes to the controller again. From this, again, it goes to the controller. It goes and renders, it does some manipulation in other Java classes. This is servlets is also a Java class. Another you have the Java classes here. This is your model. Model we have seen. This, this is the Pojo or the logic thing that you write here. Pojo whatever say means whatever you can say or your logic the logic you write here okay then you have the database that connects this is my model this is my model too 
you have the DP, the database. You can check. This is the my database. This is my model view controller. You can say everything has been centralized. The benefits of it. The servlets is a centralized. So the controller, you have one controller. It is already centralized. So you can say the advantages of it is uh, it's navigation control is centralized here. Advantages is do not have to write each and every JSP pages uh, logic in one controller if you write. Not only it is sufficient, you can have numerous night and type of controller depending based on your program. But if for a particular uh, uh, session or not session for a particular job, you can have one controller only. So the navigation control is centralized here. You can say that it is easy easy to extend or maintain. Instead of writing thousands of this pages, the logic you can write in write one only one controller. So it is easy to extend or maintain. Even you can easy to test. Also give you an option of suppose you have some uh, bugs and this is this easy to easy to debug. So because you have a separate model you have a separate view you have a separate controller it is easy to debug also only disadvantage you can say it has you need to write the code of a controller you need to write the code of inside the controller that is a, your java class servlet you can also say servlet is my java class Which, as you do not have any extra server right here in this model one, okay. So there was no extra Java class, so you did not have to write. This is you can say that we can compromise with this. It's nothing. We are the developers. We love Java, and we can write the code inside the servlets. So is it clear the model one and model two, and why we use the model two architecture more? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So this is here, and there are some extensions in the model too. While we will doing, while we will go with the struts and the springs, the extensions between the different model too, we will just proceed. And uh, okay, and this was my this. And if we have time, okay, we have some time. So we go back to our concept of the client and the server. We go back to our client that is the web browser. We go back to it and this is my web browser that we have already seen and we go to the server the server go back from this actually we have gone deep inside this server and we have explained the how the architecture or how this particular things are done inside the server actually the design pattern we have understood inside the server This is a very bad at drawing. This is my server. Okay, this is my server. We have seen the server. You have the JSP, this MBC architecture already inside your server. So something now you can have a web server application means us especially a web server like a tomcat or you have something 
So what it does, it actually expose the URL. Now you are in the URL, it has something called web server app. Suppose your Tomcat, it has your web server app. Okay. Now you are calling something a get method. I will explain you what is the difference between a get and a put. Something a get has been come. So what it does, it actually goes to your a web container. This web server points something called your web container. Remember this term, the web container that I'm calling. This is my a web container. There you have something called a web container maybe. This is my web container. Web container. Remember the web container inside your program is always you will see as in some web.xml or I will show you. Remember this web container while we will do the programming language. Uh, this <coughs> uh this web container i'm going to i will tell you which is my web container so this web container it does what it checks the request here this particular checks the request here the web container okay this web container checks this particularly http request and it forwards you to a particular either to a particular jsp page or it directly sends to this according to the request it sends to your servlets. This is my servlets, or directly to your MVC. Suppose this is my servlets. It sends the servlets, and then you know that what it does as a controller. It sends the request to the servlets. This is my web.xml. Okay, remember this. This web container is basically my web.xml where we have written in this xml file so if this request comes you need to go to this particular servlet and this web container is common for uh, with a different name maybe it's common for your struts it's common for your springs this is the main concept in the web container where the request comes from the client this server this server inside this server it always points to the web container for servlets is web.xml okay so the thing is in those servlets okay from this in the inside this xml file or this file you write a program so if this comes suppose a request comes like www.facebook.com it comes to the web container okay it checks okay they have already sent so which page it sends the request to the servlets servlets checks okay uh, okay this is web they have already sent from the web container i am getting this request as your www.facebook.com this has come so i know the servlets knows which page which jsp page to be rendered so it brings the jsp page that is the login page of the facebook it sends that back to your directly back to your web container and this web container sends again this web server and this is sent back to the client so now you know that it can have the jsp pages it can have here the jsp pages that is my view it can goes either again from one jsp page it goes again it does the same web.xml it finds like you can have a separate servlets in web.xml you can have a different controllers this is one of the controller i'm seeing mbc architecture model view architecture already there in web container you can have several like this you can have again suppose this server is a very big one you can have again this is servlet one you can have the servlet two here depending on some pages servlet two then it has again the model view controller and again it goes so web container defines that which controller to be invoked whenever a request comes 
and the web container always sends back to that particular client the response that has been sent from the controller that is the servlet so this is my web container the main job of the web container is to give this particularly servlet what it does the request and it processes the request the servlet processes the request and then it sends back the response the web container might be mapped actually this is acting as a map it can be might be mapped to number of servlets means number of controller like controller one is your this servlet one controller two maybe your servlet two in the web container that is being done so remember for the servlet it is web.xml for studs is studs config.xml and for you have spring spring servlets also you have that that is called the dispatcher servlet the controller wave controller is known as the dispatcher servlet in case of this and but the concept inside the web container is basically the same it sends to the particular controller and controller from there takes the job controller will do the job and send back the response yeah any question anybody uh, excuse me sir yeah yeah uh, like in order to render the pages, web pages, uh, there is no involvement of the model, only the servlets. No, there is, there can be. Suppose it all depends on your program. It can be. Suppose you have, uh, no, I'm telling, suppose you have different controllers here, okay, the Facebook. It's not a just a one application. It can have several of functionalities in your Facebook. You can view the timeline. You can just uh, add uh, friends. You can uh, clear, uh, give likes, or you can do anything. This you have in your web container. Okay. The basically the web containers it has it can have numerous of controllers there. So in the Facebook, think of a Facebook. It has number of controllers. So it sends to the different controller. But if you have something, a login page there, which is common to all the controllers, which is already common to the, all the controllers. So inside your web container, you can give the first login page or the index page, which is common inside that you can define because as this has been common to all the controllers. So you can define, means I'm giving an example example of your program means how you can do there can be a separate uh, in another example also so you can give your index.jsp page or the first login page in the web container there so it will just it does not need to go to the controller it does not need to go to the controller when the request comes here it will tell okay this is my login page this is the first page you need to invoke so the web container it does that it renders the first login page and then it sends to the client. This can be done. This is, is one of the examples that I've given. You can have the several examples. You can have, if you have some, it all depends on how you are designing your code actually. So one of the example I've given is better if you have a login page that is uh, common to all the controllers so why to have a different controller or data just it has to be a page so i can just invoke that the first jsp page or the index jsp page is my this page so from here only it will return the index page from here only to return the index page to the web browser from here only it doesn't need to go to the controller it will just render the page and it will send to the uh, web the server app and then the web browser. Yeah, Monica, your question again. Uh, is it yeah. clear or? Uh, yeah, that means clear? only the index pages will be uh, uh, directly. Not sent only, back. I told you. I told you not only. It depends on your whole your programs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it depends on your design. I give you. I gave you just an example as an instance. Just an instance yeah. I've given to make you. Yeah understand that also we can do in your web.xml in the container we can just render the pages from there so i gave an example the index jsp page that is an example that mainly we do it mainly in your program the index pages we do it okay that's why i gave that example but also it depends on your program on your design that how you design your web container yes. you can render other pages too okay yes. it depends 
Okay, the index JSP page as it is common, we can just send to the web browser instead of going to the. It will save your CPU time because the login page again you are sending a container where you do not have to do some logic, just the logic, the page. Then you can do it. Even you can give your logout page also in the web controller. When you click on the this web container, you can give the logout dot click. You do not have to render anything. To the controllers or something if you do not need any extra functionality you can give there also the logout page also in your web.xml it all depends on your programs yes. okay monica is it uh, i mean uh, you hope you answer i have answered your query anyways yes, anyways okay so uh, 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 this is it for today and tomorrow we will go the real servlets okay the servlets first then we will go to the jsp because for that you need to write the controllers first so we need to have the servlets and the pojos and the models then we will go in jsp first we will finish with the servlets so remember tomorrow i will explain you different like http requests Tomorrow classes. I'm going to do the HTTP quest. HTTP quest and response. HTTP methods like get and post. And also uh, maybe a small subreddit program. Okay, first we will go with the servlet and then. So, bye for today. Yeah, Anusha, Sandeep, and Jayeshwani, do you have any questions? Okay. Or you are fine with the today's class? That hope you understood this MVC. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I have a doubt. Like, you'll explain about uh, uh, the H. Uh, yeah, the HTTP. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And HTTP tomorrow we are going right. I told you that HTTP request and the response, the methods get and the post and everything. Tomorrow I'm in the tomorrow classes. I'm going to explain you more about this HTTP request and response. Okay. So, okay. See, this will be discussed in tomorrow classes. The HTTP request today. I just took the class with the model to make you understand what is this model view controller and why this how the architecture of the servlets and the jsp is taken tomorrow we are going with the real concepts of what is http request response get post your uh, servlet program everything so yeah. or, okay okay yeah so bye for today and tomorrow we will start tomorrow means we will start monday it will be your i think your sunday night or yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, bye. Bye for now.